Well, welcome back DIY car guys and car girls. And unfortunately, we're not gonna mess with the 400 cubic inch small block Chevy today. Start a new position, a new role, and a new job. And I kinda wanna fill out that job before I go spending a whole bunch of money on this because new job, new position. You kinda wanna just see how it goes before you start spending a whole bunch of money. But let me show you what I picked up. I finally got rid of my 338,000 mile Mazda B3000 pickup and I picked this up. Let me show you what I got. I picked up a 2020 used Chevrolet Bolt, all EV car. I know a lot of you guys are like, man, why'd you pick that up? Hear me out first, let me talk to you real quick. So first of all, I love it. I haven't seen a gas station in two weeks. I'm gonna go over the cost of it, what I use to charge it, all that good stuff in a second. But let me talk to you guys. I know, this, let's just get rid of the politics, all that stuff, put it to the side, and I just wanna say that I think EV cars are cool. Now, they're not my choice car for racing. I love my gas burners, ethanol, anything that makes noise, that is my preferred car for racing. This is a commuter. I got it because you know what happened when gas went up to like, you know, almost $5 a gallon. I think it did hit $5 a gallon where I'm at. I didn't wanna be put in that position again. Let's talk about who these cars are for. If you have a, if you're a commuter, and you're within a certain range, they're freaking awesome. And you have to have a reliable way to charge it. So, you know, since my garage is like this, and yes, I pulled the panel to my circuit breaker box off, but I wanna show you how this works. It's actually super, super simple. I won't get too technical, but, uh, and like I said, someone's gonna see this. This is a, a 6.3 NM wire. Uh, you need that because when you're powering 240 volts to your EV, you have to make sure that you can carry enough current safely to your 1450R receptacle. Basically, this guy right here. I, I took this off because we're gonna throw the voltmeter on this and over there so you can just get a, a general overview about 240 and how all this works. And of course, right here is the charger, which I'll get into in a second. And I'm not sure about the code if this needs to be in some type of PVC conduit. I was in a rush to get it done because I had to get to work the next day. So I just ran it right here and you got insulation around it and you get insulation in it. And as far as like why you wanna put it in conduit is basically, if you have a knife, you're not stabbing right into it right here or you're using your weed whacker or you're putting down some chainsaws and you scrape the side of your garage. That's the main reason why they want you to put it in conduit. But if you have a little bit of common sense and you wanna just stay away from that, let's go here. I'm using square D breakers, at least my box. Every box has a different type of breaker, but this is a square D unit. So let me show you this real quick. So here is the dual pole circuit breaker and this is 50 amps. Of course, 50 amps is what you need because you're gonna be drawing anywhere from like, you know, 35 to 48 amps on your charger. So you need to make sure you have the correct dual pole circuit breaker and the correct wires, which six, three in M wires will carry a 50 amp load across those wires. And it's very important that you have wires that can take that load or that current because if not, then what's gonna happen is your wires over time will start heating up and they'll turn into a fuse. They can melt together, they'll short together, they'll pop, blow your breaker, or worse, they will burn your house down. So make sure that everything you're wiring up is the correct stuff to work with that load. All right, so basically how it works, you see these two right here? Even if I were to shut this breaker off, this stuff right here is hot. I did a lot of this while it was live. You know, F it, we'll do it live. But before I threw the breaker on there and everything down this section and did all this, I did flip the main breaker, which I have a 200 amp main breaker, which is good. You at least need that depending on everything in your house to power that. If you have a big load, everything's on your house, you need to make sure everything going this way to your house and everything going that way when you're charging your electric vehicle will not overload this. There's a lot of things you gotta look at. If you're not comfortable with this, definitely call an electrician, make sure everything is right, or just have them come out and do it. Me, I'm a DIY guy, so I did it myself. So let's first talk about how this works. So all your house stuff is really just one phase. 
and it comes from a transformer outside let me show you that and this is the transformer i'm not sure what it comes in at it's probably coming in from multiple sources and maybe one feed and it's going to distribute it to all these homes but it's going to break up that 240 and it's going to put it in two different lines basically you're transforming these little spirals and it's going to attach to a shorter one here and a shorter one here and that's going to feed 240 to your house hopefully that's kind of right but that's how i understand it so basically what that transformer is doing is stepping it down into 120 120 but you want 240 to charge your electric vehicle or it's going to take an extremely long time. I know this from trying to do 120 and I was like, nope, not going to work. I'm never going to get charged enough to do the mileage I need to do every day when I go to work. So you have 120 right here, 120 right here, and then this breaker right here runs off those two poles right there. These two poles is one right here and one right here. You see this pole is going down this side of breakers, this side of breakers. This combines both of them to give you 240. And over here, you have your neutral and then the hots going out that way. And you see right here, hot, hot, back to the power company, the neutral, and all these guys right here, the ground and the neutral is coming off of this bus bar. And if you look right here on the receptacle wiring, it is the exact same way. These two guys are your hot, and in the middle is your ground and neutral. And one thing important to note about your ground wires right here they're just used for a fault and hopefully these things are never used but they're there in case stuff shorts out and this is basically a protectant that goes into all your receptacles that would carry it back out over here but you never want these to actually carry current hopefully they never carry current if they do there's a problem all right so i think the best way to demonstrate how this works is with a voltmeter so we're just going to put this to 600 volts because obviously we're going to exceed 200 volts. We're going to put it at 600. And over here is going to be the neutral. So we're going to take this guy right here. And if I were to touch it right here, you're going to see we have 120 volts on the voltmeter. If I were to go to this side, you see that it's also, uh, well, this is 121. This one's a little bit of an overachiever. Maybe the grid is not supplying enough houses right now and it's just kind of coming through. But if we were to go across both of these, what are we going to get? Uh, you guessed it. 242. All right. We got some volts coming through this guy. Now, down here is my dual pole breaker right here, which means it goes on this side and that side. It's combining them. And you see two wires coming out. That's why we need six three wire is because we need an extra line to carry 240 to the receptacle over there. So if I were to take this on over here, the best bus bar, which connects to this right here, just touch any point over here. And if I were to hit this, check out what's going to happen to the voltmeter over there. So as you see, it's going to read a 120. It's reading 121 again. If I were to touch the other side, which is on the other pole, it's going to be 120 again. So we're reading both those poles off of what's coming in from the transformer outside, which breaks that 240 into two different lines of 120, 120 right here. So it's actually, it's pretty simple once you know how all this works. Just when you're around this, make sure you just don't go in eh, eh, and poke your two fingers right there like you're picking your nose because that's going to light you the F up right there. So... What we need to do now is just follow these lines down here and you'll see how this happens over there the exact same way. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this right here. We're doing it the exact same way. So this is the two hots coming in. If you notice, the ones that are going to be the gold color is pretty much always the hot. The green is going to be the ground. Silver is going to be the neutral. So if you don't know what something's wired, you can just look at those colors right there and that will pretty much tell you how it's supposed to be wired. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go from here on one side, which is coming from the breaker. We got two of them coming from the breaker from the two poles. This is coming from the breaker. That's coming from the breaker. And if I were to touch it right here, and you can see up there that we are at 121 volts. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna do it again. And look at that, 121 volts. Now. If we were to go across both of them, what is it going to do? Up oh, 243 volts. Now, the reason why 
this can work on this, unlike DC, is because this is um, pulsing back and forth at 60 hertz. So electricity is going this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. If this was DC, this would not work out too well. Of course, you know, you have to have it ground in DC no matter what, but this is two hot leads right here. So you gotta think about AC a lot different than DC. And now that all that is uh, pretty much explained, for safety sake, let's go ahead and put this guy back on there. So that way, I don't do something dumb and end up popping the breaker or electrocuting the crap out of myself. And with that done, we can now plug up the charger. There we go. And I also put the cover back in my Square D box. If you're wondering what Square D is, there's a whole bunch of different circuit breakers. Square D basically on the two poles looks like a little hand and it just clamps onto the sides of the pole. They have ones that sl slot into the side. It all depends on what kind of box you have is how that's gonna work. So you have to know what breaker goes with your box that you have. But I went ahead, like I said, I put this cover back on so that way a piece of metal doesn't fly in there and end up like shorting out, tripping my blakers, possibly causing a fire. Probably won't cause a fire, it'll cause a big spark. Okay, so for pretty much everything besides Tesla, GM, Ford, everything else, they use a J1772 plug for your level two charger. This is level two. Uh, the only one that's above this is DC fast charge. This is an AC. Basically, what it uses is your car's um, AC to DC converter to charge your car. So you're limited to how fast that um, converter on your car is to charge this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this up and I'll show you the app and it'll tell you exactly how many amps you're using and all that good stuff. You can see mine does not have the fast charge, which is okay. I don't really need that, it's better for the battery anyways. And this charges pretty darn fast. So if I had to plug it up, I already charged it last night, I drove around a whole bunch today, and you can see the car pretty much acts as your phone when it's charging, which is pretty cool. And then it'll tell you in here exactly how long it's gonna take. And you can see at 7.45 tonight, which is already about six o'clock, it'll be charged. Does not take long at all when you're not very low. So let's go over here. And what this will tell you is exactly how many kilowatts is using. Power right here, 7.6 kilowatts. Tells you the volts, 240. And it also has an app. Let me show you the app real quick. So here is the app. You can see it's telling you what the current amps is. Now I can try to turn up the amps right here from 31.5, but it will not exceed 31.5. Now I'm not sure if that's the charger itself because it's supposed to be a 48 amp charger or if that is the capacity of my converter from D AC to DC converter on the vehicle itself. But what I do like about this is when it's done charging, it will tell you exactly how many kilowatt hours it has used. And you can use that with your electric company. You can go to your electric company and they will show you your current rates. So whatever that is on your kilowatts times your kilowatt power rates for your electric company is exactly how much it costs. Let me show you guys exactly how much this cost me. Okay, so I added up one of my days. This is a long day, uh, me driving all around. This is all my spots. I put them in MapQuest. So that was 175 miles and those by the kilowatts it took to charge, cost me uh, $3.16. Now, a car that gets 35 miles at a gallon, and if you're paying $3.30 a gallon in gas, it's gonna cost you $16.50. Now, we'll, I'll, when I get the power bill in, I'm gonna add up all these and see if it's actually, you know, what it is. But what I'm adding here, according to the power company, kilowatts an hour, what I'm using over there on the charger, that's how much it's costing me. So, so far, I am loving it. Now, time is gonna tell, I feel like it's bugs. Time is gonna tell how well the battery's gonna hold up, but I do have, I purchased from the dealer, I purchased a five year unlimited mileage warranty, bumper to bumper, battery, anything else happens to that, they have to replace it. So we're gonna see how well that works out, because I made sure I got a limited mile warranty, because I'm gonna be driving this thing a whole bunch. So we're gonna see how well their battery holds up, so all you naysayers, 
or you know, maybe I'll be wrong, maybe you guys will be right, I don't know. We're gonna see exactly how much this costs in the long run. I'm gonna look at the um, utility bill to make sure the kilowatt per hour is going on that, matches what I'm driving on this to see what their overall savings is, if there is any. I know a lot of people are very skeptical about electric cars. You know, I'm jumping into it because I really want to see, is it worth all the hype? Is it worth the investment? You know, I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Until next time, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Peace.